What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Becky Lynch teasing a match with Ronda Rousey, almost responds to The Undertaker, Alexa Bliss's passionate plea, Goldberg's real life hate for a wrestler, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at Becky Lynch teasing a match with Ronda Rousey. Now, topping today's news, could the WWE Universe see a rematch between Lynch and Ronda Rousey from WrestleMania 35? That historic night saw the first ever women's main event at the Showcase of the Immortals as the man defeated Rousey, although not without controversy as it appeared Rousey had her shoulder up when she was pinned, but now Lynch seems to be stirring the pot again for Rousey to return to the WWE as she discussed future opponents including the former Raw Women's Champion. Big Time Bex during a talk with Bleacher Reports, Graham Matthews said, We have a lot of people. Then of course, is Ronda Rousey going to be chomping at the bit to get back now that she sees what I've accomplished? Maybe she'd want to accomplish the same. Maybe she'll want to get retribution for the loss I gave her at WrestleMania 35. The same loss that's caused me to be champion ever since. A Lynch brought up some other names as well. There are a lot of options. Maybe Bailey will come back, maybe Asuka will come back. The possibilities are endless. Right now, the WWE doesn't seem in a hurry to take the belt off Lynch, which could lead to a big money program at WrestleMania if she were to face a top tier opponent fans think can wrest the title from her. The interview included Lynch discussing her potential plans for Hollywood, how wrestling after giving birth has affected her, and how much the WWE's women's division has grown. Now, there have been rumors of Rousey returning to wrestling ever since she took time off from the WWE in 2019 to start a family. Rousey has been ambiguous about a return, sometimes teasing she'll be back but at other times hinting that she has no reason to return. Do you think Lynch and Rousey will ever face each other in the ring again? Let us know in the comments down below. Now, our next story looks at almost responding to The Undertaker. As some comments from The Undertaker about current Raw superstar almost haven't gone unnoticed by AJ Styles' current tag team partner. Now, in case you missed it, Taker recently appeared on the bump and had this to say about Amos. There will never be another Andre, but this guy is as close as we've come, and that's a big statement. The Undertaker said that Omos still stands out despite wrestlers' heights having grown through the years. The Phenom noted that Omos needs to understand how special he is and how important it is for him to protect his character. But while Omos still needs time to grow, he's shown remarkable improvement during a short time he's been on the main roster, and the WWE should protect him in order to see how far he can go. Omos was floored by The Undertaker's comments and tweeted, Man, I'm lost for words. Just grateful. Thank you. With a career dating back to the mid-80s, The Undertaker has worked with some of the biggest names in the wrestling industry from the last five decades, which means he has lots to offer in terms of evaluating current stars and their potential. Do you guys agree with The Undertaker's assessment of Omos? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Alexa Bliss's passionate plea to fans. While WWE superstar Alexa Bliss is currently taking time off from the WWE, reportedly to have no surgery, she's still online and warning fans not to fall for scams similar to the one that apparently befell Seth Rollins' alleged attacker. Wrestling's Five Feet of Fury recently tweeted this warning. For those who think they've spoken to me on a private account or Google Hangout or any other form of communication, it is not me. It is someone pretending to be me. I hate that I have to repeat this so much, this is my only act and I only have one IG. Bliss's warning reflects an all too real trend of scam artists posing as wrestlers and luring gullible fans into thinking they are talking with wrestlers then hitting up duped fans into sending them cash, gift cards and anything they can get their hands on. Next up, Goldberg talks his real hatred for a wrestler. Is imitation the sincerest form of flattery? Or perhaps, but what about parody? In the case of WWE Hall of Famer Bill Goldberg, parody almost led to a felony as Big Bad Bill didn't react kindly when the WWF began parodying his wildly successful wrestling persona with Dwayne Gilberg, a grappler from its light heavyweight division. Gilberg's imitation of Goldberg was hilarious as the lean and not so mean wrestler made his ring entrance with sparklers instead of fireworks as Gilberg chants were obviously piped into the arena. However, Goldberg wasn't laughing, and in fact had bad intentions for the pint-sized parody. In 2018, Goldberg revealed, I wanted to rip his head off, and then everyone who had the idea. I could have taken it in a number of ways, but I took it violently at first. I should have been honored to be old enough to have a copycat. I have nothing against the guy and I appreciate that he got a chance at wrestling. Good for him. 
Goldberg eventually calmed down and recently spoke at Gilberg during an episode of the WWE Network's Ruthless Aggression series. I hated the Gilberg thing at first. I absolutely hated it. I wanted to rip the boy's face off. I really wanted to kill him. That means it worked. Mark Goldberg is one of wrestling's most incredible success stories, a man whose unbeaten streak in WCW led to a remarkable rise to the top that culminated him defeating Hollywood Hulk Hogan for the WCW Championship in the epic clash on Nitro in 98. However, like any wrestling success story, there's bound to be imitators. In fact, when Goldberg first debuted, some fans thought he was a Stone Cold Steve Austin ripoff. Goldberg's success likely concerned the WWE during the intense Monday Night War and making fun of one of WCW's biggest stars probably amused Mr. McMahon to no end and in his mind diminished Goldberg's character. As fans know, Goldberg's popularity led to the WWE signing him in 2002, a run which more than a few Goldberg fans damaged his character more than the Gilberg parody. Goldberg talked about The Rock helping him adjust to a WWE style. Coming from WCW to WWE and making that stir, it had to be with the right person. He was central to my immediate success in WWE. But Goldberg's later runs in the WWE proved more successful with his match against Bobby Lashley at this year's Crown Jewel applauded by fans and critics alike. Next up, Keith Lee's new look. A former NXT champion, Keith Lee is currently waiting for his 90-day non-compete clause with the WWE to expire, but he's still staying in touch with his fans on social media. Lee recently revealed a remarkable fact about him, telling fans on Twitter, Here's a fun fact about me. I started getting white hair at 16 years of age. Personally, I like it. I wish it was all white. Unfortunately, many don't understand science and only associate it with age. Happy Thanksgiving, humans. Be thankful for things you have. Lee posted a picture of himself to let the fans know how he looks with his white hair. And finally, Kurt Angle talks a cheap offer from WWE. Last but not least, WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle remains an important figure from the Attitude Era, but apparently not important enough for the WWE to throw some money his way. Now, viewers may recall that Angle was offered a job as a WWE coach and on-screen role as Matt Riddle's manager. That didn't pan out and apparently it came down to that McMahon maxim, it's all about the money. The man who wrestled with a freaking broken neck discussed the situation during an appearance on the Talk is Jericho podcast. They did offer me a few jobs though. They wanted me to be a coach at NXT. They wanted me to manage Matt Riddle, which I was very interested in, and I thought it would be really entertaining. But the money was horrible. I'm sorry, but when we talk about money, it better be at least worth it if we're going to do it. This amount was not worth it. And knowing the WWE's current tight-fisted approach to dealing with its superstars, it wouldn't surprise us if the WWE's offer for Angle to appear on screen was a low-ball figure. Jericho agreed, noting, He told me what it was. It wasn't worth it. Kurt mentioned that he asked for a role as a WWE ambassador, but the WWE turned him down. Wrestling's Olympic hero was working as a producer in the WWE before he was released in 2020. He said he completely understands why he was released. I took the job as a producer slash agent. I did it for a year. I wasn't very good at it. So when the pandemic hit, I was one of the first ones to let go and I don't blame Vince for that. Regrettably, Angle didn't give any figures on what the WWE offered him as it would have been fascinating to know just how much or little the company offered him. It's unknown what restrictions Angle might have faced had he taken the on-air job, such as the WWE preventing him from pursuing outside ventures such as his podcast. But there you have it folks, the wildest news stories and rumours you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.